Or... Okay. All right. Hello and welcome to the Studio Yutani podcast. Uh, don't call to come back. Um, we're back after a, a week because uh, Baker and I are working on a feature film um, as part of the art department, and uh, that kind of uh, kind of held us up. And, We've been uh, busy. Yeah, um, and we're going to have to find a new uh, new time to schedule the next show, too, because uh, we're shooting again this weekend. Um, we are, yeah. uh, we're recording this on a beautiful uh, Black Friday. Um, mm -hmm. hope, hope you all had a, a good Thanksgiving and uh, a, a safe Black Friday. I take that as you may. Um, <laughs> Sure. But uh, yeah, we got uh, we got Baker and uh, Justin with us today. How are you guys doing? Good, good. full and of stuffing. Full, full of stuffing. Well, aren't we all? Aren't we all? It was a good. It was a good day. Um, but um, mm -hmm. all right. So uh, we got some news this week. It's a bit of old news, like we said. We we got delayed a little bit, but we're gonna go over it anyway. Um, first. Uh, First bit of news um, is uh, we have another addition to the Ridley Scott said what? <laughs> it is a reoccurring segment. Yeah, weekly yes. segment now. Yes, yes, basically. And this week, Ridley Scott uh, blames millennials and their quote <laughs> fucking cell phones unquote for the box <laughs> office failure of the last duel. Um, it's not. It's not the global pandemic. It's not. The, no, it, uh, couldn't the, it couldn't be the poor marketing. No, it's it's millennials and their cell phones, uh, of course. Um, it's got some David Lynch energy. Like you can't watch a movie on your phone. Yeah, but but it's a little bit different than that. It's a little bit because I think he's kind of saying the attention spans are gone for a epic oh, historical movie. Sure, right. but at the same time, I I I, I think if we're if. If Ridley Scott wants to avoid the like old man yells at cloud meme, <laughs> this isn't really a good uh, a good tactic for that. Um, did he say I, this in an interview, or did he tweet it on Twitter with his fucking phone? Oh no no no! He said during an interview. I don't even know if Ridley Scott has a Twitter, honestly. I don't think he does. I don't either. even know if he has a phone. <laughs> but, and it's possible. Phone. I mean. It's funny because I, I know some of these old school filmmakers. Like I know John Williams didn't have a cell phone or a smartphone for the longest time. And then his wife like made him get one at some point. Um, so it, it's a thing. But I, I just think it's really funny because Ridley Scott is obviously, I, I love him to death. But uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of, um, this is not really quite... Uh, an in-depth look at you know the circumstances surrounding the box office failure of this movie i think justin no. as you as you said I, I i maybe there is something to be said about people's attention spans and whatnot but um but like if he's upset people are on their phones in the theater that still implies people got tickets to see his movie and went to see it even if they weren't paying attention i, I know i know that's kind of what's really funny about it uh, there's <laughs> there's some kind of uh dissonance there um <laughs> but yeah uh love you old man ridley uh ridley but uh yeah i don't i, I don't know maybe maybe think on that one a little bit um, speaking of uh ridley scott yeah uh, house of gucci was released on um wednesday i believe hey. did you see it no i didn't but uh it's not doing Oh, oh, it's spectacular! Not... Oh, really? Yeah, it's um. Well, this is still. It made, it made four point two million on Wednesday. So Ooh. I mean, for the pandemic, that's. I don't know how that fares, but it's a, it's against a seventy five million dollar budget. Yikes! Oof. And this, yeah. I mean, this is still opening weekend, I guess. But it, it's yeah. those it's those damn millennials and their cell phones, man. <laughs> I know it. Uh, Nobody wants to see given. Adam Driver and Lady Gaga, uh, two of the uh, biggest uh, celebrities on the planet, and and, and they don't want to they don't want to see Gucci either. I guess. Um, I mean, sure. I, I I will usually show up for a Ridley Scott film, uh, but you know, I was actually a little bit more interested in Last Duel than I was in in Gucci. But I don't know. Um, 
flavor. Yeah, I, I mean, I uh, like like you were saying when we talked about last duel. Um, it's good. It's it's really good. It's just, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's just not a film, you know, for you know this time um, in human history. Um, but mm. yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully Ridley Scott will find a, a hit again. Do they uh, usually release movies right on Thanksgiving? Is that typical? Um, I know Christmas, but it seems like weird. It depends. I think, on it's, I think it's a pretty good release date, you know, okay. kind yeah. of for the start of Oscar season. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, but let's uh let's get into some more sci-fi and alien related stuff um so the um alien tv show apparently is going to start shooting in early 2022 so that's uh that's coming up uh but we also got news also from ridley scott uh a blade runner live action tv show is also in development and the (laughs) pilot has already been written wow who's who's producing it do you know i believe it's ridley scott I mean, oh. what company? Uh, I like where's where's it going? Well, that I'm not sure, but uh, okay. I I assume because Blade Runner is Warner Brothers, it's probably HBO. Okay. Um, hmm. but you know, Black Lotus be, was, where was that? Black Lotus at? It was on a uh, Crunchyroll. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, Crunchyroll and Adult Swim. Adult, okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, so that's an interesting development, um. I think it's kind of funny that, uh, you know, Ridley Scott already kind of shit talked uh, the Alien TV show I- inadvertently or not. And then it's like this Black Lotus show comes out. And it's like, oh, 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 yeah. And there's also going to be a Blade Runner TV show, too. <laughs> that I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, but that I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, OK, cool. I mean, I hope, you know, I, I'm excited. I'll, you know, certainly give that a look. I'm, I, I hope. I, yeah, I'm more excited about the news of that than the prospect of finishing Black Lotus, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, really. I have I haven't checked out the second episode. Yeah. Just no drive. Right. <laughs> um so uh yeah, the, there's that. Uh more news on that as it comes along. That could um, be cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh and also uh eight to ten episodes each. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So okay, that. You know, we'll see what happens of that. Um, I'm assuming, you know, they're planning, you know, more than one season, but maybe we'll wrap up the show, you know, at, at least like uh, the current story within eight to 10 episodes. Sure. Just in yeah. case they don't get renewed or something. Exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. We got one more bit of news and then we're going to move into our uh, our main topic today. Um, uh Alien Isolation is uh, finally, finally coming to uh, Android and iOS. Oh, right. Um, So (laughs) anything uh, to avoid actually making a legitimate sequel to Alien Isolation 2, we're finally, (laughs) we're finally getting the game on our, we can play it on our phones now, Uh, our fucking cell phones. (laughs) (laughs) Where this guy's gonna be pissed, no one's watching House of Gucci because everyone's playing Alien Isolation on their phone. Uh, on their phone. Everyone <laughs> who went to go see House of Gucci is playing Alien Isolation on their phones in the theater. Um, just to piss off Ridley Scott. <laughs> um, I might but, have to. Um, I mean, it's interesting because we did get a kind of sequel to Alien Isolation, uh, Alien Blackout in uh, on mobile, which um up until this oh, yeah. point, that was the only mobile game I actually re- would recommend for anybody. Um, I don't know. <laughs> depending on how good the the port for Alien Isolation is on your phone, which it's it's hard for me to imagine how that it would even work. Um, right. I might yeah. just start recommending that one as well. But are you clicking all over the screen? Like I, I don't know. I have no idea. They must have a interface on on your phone. Then how can you even see anything if your hands are right? Yeah, it does, and that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And then it's also the like they had to have downgraded the graphical quality significantly yeah. to make it work. Um, like you but, can only travel in the vents or something. <laughs> well, it's not even that. It's just, it's just, it, I. 
it's kind of like uh there's been some games that i had on like my my playstation that uh, i got on my switch and the switch um like had to downgrade the graphics pretty significantly and it's like it still looks okay but you can tell that you know there's a there's a difference and i feel like that would have to be the case with this but because it is a smaller screen maybe possibly even less noticeable who knows sure i just keep thinking of five nights of fridays it's gonna be like that somehow well that's what alien blackout was it was right right okay was, that's what was in my head but but this is the actual like game alien isolation <laughs> That, yeah, that's, that's gonna be <laughs> that that's what i'm saying this isn't a yeah. new game this is the same game that keeps on getting reported over and over um uh, yeah. yeah yeah give us a sequel well we'll see we'll see what happens i mean there's just, there's been some sequels already kind of like i said blackout and then there was also a comic series uh that had sure. uh amanda ripley continuing her story um like a proper alien isolation too with like right. no weapons and enemies and yeah that'd be great but, um yeah but yeah uh until we get there um we're just gonna have to keep on getting this game which clearly has enduring popularity um reported and reported uh you know, give it the skyrim treatment ba basically it's like the alien isolation um you know extra special edition or something we'll give you a, yeah give, give you a new skin as amanda ripley I, I don't know um but um so that's uh that's kind of the news stories that i pulled for this week um now we have uh a new topic and uh justin you uh you picked this out so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and let you kind of explain it to us um, my uh, premise for this week is if you you get to pick the director who's working right now and has never done an alien movie to do the next alien movie. All right. Um, yeah. And when we, you say the next, do you mean like continuing Covenant or? Doesn't matter. It's okay. just With an it, alien movie. Yeah, an I alien movie coming out, coming soon. Yeah, okay. but when you explained it, I just sort of thought, oh, okay, okay, who would be an interesting pick to direct an alien movie? Not necessarily a continuation of any particular film or series. Um, but um, why don't we go ahead? Because since this is your uh your topic justin why don't you go ahead and uh we'll let you uh you begin all right my pick is uh julia ducorno we uh discussed her film titan uh, a couple months ago <laughs> and um i think she would be a great pick for an alien movie because she's does body horror does body horror very well does sure. films about women does those mm -hmm. very well and um she needs a good i think she has potential to succeed in the american uh commercial marketplace and she you also know, um, she she directed raw before she yeah. directed um uh titan mm -hmm. another body horror movie about women yes. and interesting character studies too like the alien characters are pretty good but it'd be nice to have a real intense journey with somebody in alien film so yeah no definitely um no yeah, cool like uh what do you think her film would uh be like if she if she were to direct an alien movie i could see it uh maybe documenting the process through the person who's being you know who gets the uh alien it gets the face hugger attached to them and then mm -hmm. eventually you know has their chest burst open you can see maybe a movie that takes place over the course of the one day between mm -hmm. those oh interesting two events. oh interesting so it's almost like just sort of almost like a character study of like what's going on through somebody's head as this is happening to them Mm -hmm. You could see it uh, kind of drawing back, going back to uh, the parts in Prometheus when uh, Numi Rapace has mm -hmm. something inside her. 
and right. he's terrified. Yes. You know, I think that. But the whole but the whole movie is that though. Yeah, uh, I, can see, I can see that being thing. pretty good. Um, you noted how uh, uh, I'm really bad with foreign names. Julia Decor. Decorno. Decorno. Okay. Um, you, knowing that she's like kind of a feminist filmmaker, do you think that that would sort of that theme would sort of play into that kind of story, or how do you, how do you think that would play into it? Oh yeah, I think that. Um... You know, if it if it is a female character, which you know the alien movies pretty much always have a female protagonist, mm-hmm. you know you could uh, you know it could be about um, women's relationships to their own bodies. I can see something like a theme like that working mm-hmm. in there. You know, maybe a subtle you know pro uh, choice thing. Oh, maybe a little bit. I mean, the, the pro, pro, Prometheus was a pro-choice movie. I, <laughs> someone yeah. had to. Someone had to say it. Um, but, um, <laughs> but no. I mean, it could be kind of an interesting, low-budget, almost kind of art house movie in a weird way. Um, to me, the way you described it there it kind of invoked like a uh, Gaspar Noé, like uh, Enter the Void or something, where it's like this existential experience while she's being face hugged or something like that also yeah. kind of like in, the, in the comics we read matt where you get glimpses of the alien like knowledge and world when you're being face hugged that would be cool to see adapted to a visual oh media, yeah or a, a movie that sounds watch. kind of frank herbert <laughs> yeah a little bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. A, l- a little bit of, we had to bring up dune at some point um but yeah no i, yeah, I, I, alien. I I, I think if we want to kind of go into the psychology of it, um, you know, and what a person goes through when that happens. Um, yeah, I think it has a lot of potential for sure, um, a film directed by her. And I, I think, as you said, you know, she does do body horror, but she doesn't do it in like this very Cronenbergian way. It's in a much more like more emotional kind of yeah, journey and, you know, even sensual at times. Yeah. Uh, so absolutely it, it would More definitely personal, it would know. definitely it would definitely have kind of a unique flavor to it um but uh not, not but, to mention yeah. too it would be nice to see her break out with like a big name movie you know get some recognition because everything she's done so far has been pretty niche you know mm-hmm. uh, yeah getting getting to make an american movie even with her yeah. style yeah. would be an accomplishment i think no definitely sure. definitely Definitely. Um, all right. Do you uh, uh, do you have any other uh, notes or or, or um, thoughts to say about about that, Justin? Or? Uh, um, the only other thing I would like, you know, kind of, you know, the idea of her directing an alien movie, kind of part of my idea for that came from seeing Chloe Zhao do a Marvel movie. You know, seeing a an right. art house director get to try their hands at a very mainstream oh, sure. style of filmmaking and incorporate their personal Put style yeah. into it. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um Big studios have been doing that too, just picking up these, you know, more artsy directors to do an occasion. And uh, especially horror artsy horror directors. Sure. Seems yeah. Like they've been getting a lot more opportunities. Yeah in recent uh, years I, I i could see a situation where it it kind of backfires a little bit like kind of like a jean-pierre junet alien resurrection thing where right it just it's too weird for too weird. people yeah, yeah i guess but the, uh, the difference is I, it would probably be a better made movie <laughs> um poss- yeah probably this director <laughs> yeah i don't know much about the guy who did uh alien resurrection so I, I guess I can't say what his portfolio is, but he's a he's a good director. Uh, he's very solid uh, director, but okay. you know it's that question of like when you bring in someone kind of artsy like that to do like you know artsy and European to do an American yeah. blockbuster. Yeah, right. Um, but that's the kind of pedigree that you know the Alien movies have fostered so i don't think it's entirely inappropriate sure especially after prometheus and stuff oh most definitely um well all right then uh 
I'll go ahead and uh, I'll let uh, if if that's all you have, uh, Justin. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll go ahead and have uh, Baker uh, tell us about your uh, your director yeah. and uh, their uh, what their alien film would be. But this was a fun prompt because I was trying to figure out what way to approach it, and um, I thought it would be funny if I said Kevin Smith or something like that. <laughs> but, that would be interesting. Uh, even, that would be interesting. Right, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to advocate for that necessarily. Um, I also thought Quentin Tarantino could be interesting, but that's maybe a little out there. So I ended up deciding on uh, Del Toro, Guillermo Del Toro. Not Benicio and, Del Toro. Not Benicio, no. Maybe you could do uh, a song or something <laughs> for the credits. Maybe. All right, Guillermo Del Toro. Uh, you know, I'm, when you told me this, I was a little bit disappointed in myself because I consider Guillermo Del Toro one of my favorite if if not my favorite like filmmaker um it, it, but it, for some reason it didn't it didn't cross my mind and i'm i'm a bit i'm a bit embarrassed <laughs> but but uh but no a little bit um, but uh but yeah what's uh what you, guillermo del toro um what do you yeah do you i think about? that creature feature magic he could bring something new and interesting and probably um, practical in terms of the effects, which would be nice. Um, we've seen a lot of CG stuff in Alien for a while now, and it always looks good, but it would, it would be, I think, a, a breath of like a, a new, uh, I mean, the dude's a genius, right? So bringing him in to like do original character designs or just revamping the old xenomorphs and stuff, uh, coming up with some crazy creatures. Yeah, one of the things I can see with Del Toro um del toro has a kind of a knack for you know humanizing the monsters and right that's, I, I was, but I was that's thinking not, of, yeah oh, go ahead. oh oh no i i don't want to i don't want to walk talk over your segment i'm getting um, excited oh. i'll just say resurrection i could see him doing a similar plot to that but handling it a lot better you know where you have this half alien um and i don't hate resurrection or anything i just mean you know you could probably take that and elevate it to like a shape of water or something like that where yeah. it becomes a lot well, more that, resonant well that's a kind of what i what i was about about to say was like i it's like he has a he has a thing for humanizing the monsters and giving them character and i'm like with alien that's actually not really the direction you necessarily want to go unless it's yeah. a special creature like you know the newborn where that's almost like mm -hmm. the point a little bit yeah exactly or having a character who has xenomorph dna in them i just kept thinking of alien resurrection as but, being like, well but wait, wait here's one thing though it can't it, the trouble with it is that he couldn't have ron perlman in the movie though because <laughs> ron perlman was in, <laughs> was in resurrection so there's right. there's one there's one one roadblock Oh, he could he could do uh, Alien Resurrection Resurrected. Oh shoot! Movie. It's yeah, the he, it's the remake. It's the, the, the reboot remaster. of Alien Resurrection. Yeah, the remaster. Yeah, the the, the gritty reboot. Um and and uh, there. have um a very uh a, a very Spanish flair to it, I imagine. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. A little more uh, overtly stylistic than I think you really right. get in the Alien movies. It should be interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, and I'm sure like Del Toro. Del Toro loves monster movies, and I'm sure if he was given the opportunity opportunity to direct an Alien film, he'd be all over it. Um, and, and make it his own too, which was again a cool thing about the first four is each one is very different. Yeah. So. And, and I'm sure Del Toro would bring, you know, his own style and um, his own, you know, voice to it, making it uniquely his. But I, I think he, he has enough of a, you know, understanding of what these movies are about that I, I feel like he would make one that feels very true, uh, you know, to the story. Sure. Not yeah. to mention stuff with the, the uh, synths, the androids, too. I could see some crazy practical effect work being done where maybe they carry around an actor's head half the movie or something like that, you know? 
something something like that something a little gothic um, yeah kind of almost like hammer horror almost yeah cool. yeah yeah no, no no that it's definitely an interesting choice um he hasn't done anything in a minute either has he well he's got has nightmare been... alleys coming out okay it's kind of, yeah okay or has is it already out i'm not even entirely sure at this point i'm not sure either i'll have to, look, in, yeah, I'll have to look into that but yeah it's um, so. yeah i'm always uh i'm always looking forward to a new guillermo del toro and uh yeah if he was directing a, an alien movie um that would uh that would just be a match made in heaven um but um we can dream <laughs> yeah, one, one can one can dream um but uh yeah is that a is that um you got any any closing uh, thoughts on that or i want it <laughs> i want it <laughs> i'm not sure also i guess the only other thing is i could see him going continuing from alien 4 or from covenant and um, oh you could you could do it would be interesting to see how he'd wrap up david's story working with michael fassbender and you know you know that would that would be interesting right the only difference the, the problem with that is ridley scott did both covenant and prometheus well, so well yeah and ridley scott's little... not gonna want anybody touching his right. his story so right. um Maybe they can co-direct or something <laughs> i highly doubt it i think those <laughs> those those heads would would butt um, yeah, yeah. for sure yeah um the, the production stories from that <laughs> oh oh yeah that will that that would be something um but all right cool so there. if uh if that's everything i've uh i got uh the last choice and i uh i cycled through a few different filmmakers on this and uh ultimately i uh I landed on, on on one in particular, and and actually the people that I was considering would have probably taken the Alien movie in a in a similar direction, but I think this person that I chose had just the most flavor, and I think ultimately would craft like a really scary movie, and that person that I chose was Jordan Peele. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. a little bit of a background on, on, on Peel. Of course, uh, you know, he's a sketch comedy writer. Uh, did Key and Peel, I believe that was on Comedy Central, if I'm, if I'm yeah. mistaken. Yep. Or, or was it ABC? I'm, it was Comedy Central. It was Comedy yeah. Central. Okay. Uh, but then he, uh, he made his breakout uh, directorial, feature film directorial debut, of course, with Get Out. Uh, which mm -hmm. received critical acclaim, and he won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay, on top of being nominated for Best Director and Best Picture on that film. Uh, it's quite an achievement. Um, and of course, he uh, he directed Us later, which people were more mixed on, but I, I liked it quite a bit. Uh, develop and narrates the Twilight Zone reboot, and uh, He's got an upcoming horror film which has the best title ever. It's called Nope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, that's Both so good. Great. It's so good. Um, but Peel, uh, Peel's style is is sort of this interesting blend of comedy and horror, and he does right. both. Was... He does both very well. Um, mm -hmm. Really walks the line on that. Uh, his films also focus, of course, on social commentary and uh, particularly uh, racial issues, which I think would play uh, into his Alien movie. Um, but uh, the the like I was saying, the reason I picked him, though, is I think he's great at horror, and specifically, he's really great at building tension. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was almost that was really kind of the defining factor for me because. I was like, this guy could craft a really scary alien movie. And that's the thing I really would want to see more than anything, is I want it to be scary. That's um, a good take, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Alien being kind of science fiction also opens up a lot of room for, you know, social commentary and satire. Um, mm -hmm. 
which is you know a noted feature of his previous horror films and also you know c- you know just comedy in general like the kind of blue collar comedy that we see in the first alien um, yeah. you know between Brent and Parker and then also the um you know the the marines and all their one liners and aliens um i think there's a lot of room there for you know um appeal uh, to kind of exploit the more humorous and uh aspects of the franchise um i can see him almost having like a an army character there just to represent like aliens in a sense you yeah, know okay. and make jokes out of that but they fit you know oh definitely and i kind of kind of have a little bit of that coming up um but um and then again the social commentary and whatnot there was a discussion a little while back um about like whether or not alien is political and while there's you know differing views about that or what that even means um i would personally argue that it is like you know because it's very much about like you know you know the power wielded by mega corporations and vulnerability of working class people and and whatnot it's like it's all there and i think it's all ripe to be explored um further which peel absolutely would do yeah i think people have different ideas of what political means <laughs> yeah so that's probably but, where a lot of that came from that controversy. Sure. You could definitely see people taking different aspects of all the different uh, alien movies and combining them into his own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. making his own. Well, I, I kind of see his movie would sort of be a hybrid of uh, alien and aliens, uh, combining both the horror of the first film with the intensity of the second. And sure. P- Peel was, Peel was, you know, a child of the 80s he was he was born in 79 and we see in the movie us there's kind of a nostalgia for the 80s that plays a role in that film and so i feel like alien and aliens both were probably major influences on him sure so, i could definitely see that and us would you consider that like a that's kind of sci-fi horror fantasy horror or something it's just kind of like Twilight Zone esque. Yeah, yeah. You kind of have to just sort of go Abstract with it. Yeah, yeah, you kind of just have to go with the premise. Like a lot of people had trouble accepting the premise. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just like, it's just like the Twilight Zone. You know, it's just like you just go with it. You're yeah. either in or you're out. Um, Social but, horror. I've even heard it be called. Oh, definitely. Oh, that if yeah, if we're gonna categorize anything that Jordan Peele does, it's social horror. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Peel has also said that, you know, he said in an interview he will never uh, put a, uh, a white person in the lead in his movies because there's already a million horror movies with white leads. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, sure, fair enough. That's a good point. Um, and he, so, he likes writing from his lived experience, too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And that's why I think we would see uh, a cast that's mostly, if not entirely, uh, black, um, and the lead would certainly be black. And um, I actually do have a little bit of a story that I, I kind of conceived, um, which I'll I'll get into. But I, I kind of conceived the main character a little bit differently. I thought, um, and there's a reason for this. But I I, I was thinking it was going to be like he's a company man, actually, mm. um, and and. I'm jumping ahead a bit, but that's there, there's a reason why I, I have it that way. Um, the other the other characters are kind of similar to what we've seen before. There's there's working class and blue collar characters, um, and then also an android character who is uh, um, also you'd be like I guess he would be like the first like black android in the series because I because <laughs> I thought I thought there could be some satire there because Peel likes to aim high with like a lot of his social commentary. And I think the idea of alien uh, of androids in the alien series is sort of being like um, a subservient class of people. Right. I, I, I think there's some satire in the idea of like wanting to add diversity to the subservient class of people so that we don't, question Mm. why there's a subservient class of people right yeah i could see him handling that yeah and and it could do it in a way that fits in both alien and 
you know, classic science fiction in general, and it doesn't have to even get like really super preachy or anything. It, no, I just, yeah. I just kind of felt like I felt like that's something that uh, Peel might might do. Um, but sure. but but again, I'm kind of I kind of got a, a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, I put together kind of a rudimentary story um, the, based on you know what Peel has done and you know how he might try and tackle alien and i i look at it like the story is actually going to be set in like a colony uh like the one like hadley's hope not not hadley's hope but you know like <laughs> like, like a colony on a Wayland yutani controlled planet and mm -hmm. like i said the uh the main character is like a company man that's you know, like overseeing everything um but uh the, at the time the story begins, the colony is like waiting for the supply shipment to come in. And when it comes in, of course, oh no, you know, yeah, it's it's <laughs> it, there's something really, really wrong, right? And then soon there's a bunch of aliens overrunning the colony. Um, and this main character, who's the company man, is going to realize that he is not prepared to deal with this and that he actually doesn't know what he's doing. And mm. it's like his journey almost, it's like he he starts out feeling like he's kind of superior to everyone and then realizes that he doesn't actually know how to handle this. And he ends up kind of needing to, you know, create a bridge with a lot of the, uh, the, the other colonists in order to get through the situation. Um, it's a little humbled a little a little bit um and then i see a lot of tension filled moments like i think peel would probably use a chest burster as a ticking time bomb um oh, yeah That'd i had a, i had an idea that maybe there'd be kind of a twist on the chest burster scene from the first movie where somebody like they know the alien is inside and they know it's going to come out and they almost like have to like throw them on the table and like do like a rudimentary like you know surgery and try and cut it out before it hatches kind of mm -hmm. thing which you know that's you know there's it's almost a little bit over the top but that's something that peel has done if you've seen get out or us yeah um, yeah it's also um, more realistic in a sense too yeah it's it kind of more raw and like yeah it's kind of a twist a really really um kind of a down-to-earth, grounded, gritty version of the med pod scene in Prometheus. <laughs> right, that's what I was just thinking. That's a little too easy. But um, but the reason why I, I I kind of added all that setup with like the company man and everything is because the the twist of the movie is that the aliens were deliberately sent by the company, and the whole colony was set up as a bioweapons test zone. And they wanted to see how quickly these things could just take out some colony. So, okay. so really- that, that extra twist in the end to make well, it a real deal. Yeah, but, but, but that's the Jordan Peele kind of satire of it. It's like this whole colony, including the company guy, it's like, it was just all a ruse. Right, yeah. and, and they were all pawns set up for this, you know, this weapons test. And making uh, the main character directly from the company that did it. Yeah, yeah and making him, make. setting him up as a pawn, right? So he thinks <laughs> he's superior, uh, but but he's really he's really not. It's almost like kind of in the way that I was I brought up that black android character. He's brought up uh, because um, he's there to make the colonists feel a little bit better about their station in life. And then at the same time, the, the company guy, the main character, he's brought in as a face to make it feel as though some kind of upward social mobility is possible. But at the end of the day, they're all just like pawns. Their fate's been written already. Yeah, yes, yeah. E exactly. So I felt like that's the kind of thing that Jordan Peele would absolutely kind of go for. Um, again, not necessarily what he would write. He'd probably write something better than this, but... I was I was kind of thinking that might be something he'd do. Um, the finale kind of outline, yeah. Um, and then I had the finale is um, they find out that the satellite that's orbiting the 
the world is going to fire a nuke uh, at the cop. <laughs> so, so it's like after they've concluded the test, it's like we want to eliminate any trace of what happened, right? So they, so basically, they find out that they're going to just nuke the entire site from orbit. So. <laughs> the company guy or whoever's surviving, uh, whoever survived this ordeal has to escape in a tension fraught, um, you know, dash uh, to, to get away from the, uh, from the explosion. Um, but which we got is, some set piece. Yeah. And that's also very much in the vein of aliens, but of course, because this is alien, there is gotta be a four fact, right? And sure. th there is an alien on board the ship and characteristically gets into a spacesuit and uh, blows it out of the goddamn airlock. <laughs> um, no, but the reason I kind of go through that uh, is because I feel like what Jordan Peele would get at is like, even though like in the first alien, that was like the end. It's like, okay, it's gone. I feel like in Jordan Peele's case, that's not satisfying, right? Because yeah, we got rid of the alien, but the the actual root cause of the problem is still there. Like the company did this, and we have a character who feels as though he's somewhat responsible for it. Like mm -hmm. he he like he let it happen, and that's why I kind of feel like there would either be like an epilogue or a true third act, quote unquote where he's actually going to return to earth and actually try and, you know, t go after the company basically. Right. Or it's set up at the end that that's his next. Yeah. Or so, yeah. Something like yeah. it's, it's kind of, it's a lot happening. So it's kind of hard to imagine. I just feel like Jordan Peele would want to advance upon, you know, it just being about the monster and going after who brought the monster here in the first place. Right. The monster is almost like just a symptom of the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you couldn't tell, I, I thought about it quite a bit. Yeah, I wish I'd come up with like a, a pitch for a script because I, I was just, I kept thinking resurrection. Like you just do resurrection again. <laughs> but better. Right. Resurrected. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking was like, it's like, okay, it's like, what do you think, what would Jordan Peele do? And I, I basically feel like he would do a really tension-filled, scary alien movie, but it also have a lot of comedy, a lot of social satire, um, and it would kind of bring out some of the more socio-political themes that are already present in the series and just kind of ramp them up a little bit, almost to yeah. like absurd levels almost, which you know if you, again if you've seen get out or us it does get to that point where it is almost kind of silly but mm -hmm. you buy it because they did such a good job of building the world up to that point point. Mm -hmm. and if you exaggerate something like that too it becomes more timeless right if it's so specific it can feel like oh this is in the 80s when they were talking about yeah or, you know yeah a, vietnam or something yeah a, a little bit uh, but, but yeah, that's kind of basically what I, I was, um, I was going for the other directors for people who were curious, uh, I was considering Bong Joon-ho. Um, yeah, that's what I thought you were, yeah, that, that would be really good too. Uh, I, Bong Joon-ho would actually kind of be a more obvious pick, um, hmm. and his, uh, his alien film would definitely do a lot of similar things to Jordan Peele. It'd be very much kind of like the, Kind of like the movie The Host uh, from 2006. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's going to be a satire. Um, but again, even though there's, even though The Host does have a lot of really scary moments, I just really felt like Peel could rack up the tension. And that was, again, that was kind of the defining thing for me was that, uh, was that I wanted the movie to be like just a frightening, scary. frightening yeah. and, and I thought it would be fresh and have a little bit more, you know, a little bit more of a kick to it, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, It'd be interesting with uh, Bong Joon-ho, too, because he's done, obviously, mostly Korean movies. I mean, they're all Korean movies, but he shot Snowpiercer English script, right? So Yeah, that was his first English-speaking English speaking film, yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to get a movie 
an alien movie that's all in Korean. You know, uh, well, like, they are an international company, right? Studio Yutani. Uh, well, I mean, it's Australian. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. Studio Yutani. I meant uh, Wayland Yutani. <laughs> oh, Wayland Yutani. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're yeah they're interplanetary. I mean, it's, um, I think they're. It's like America. Yeah, it's it's America, uh, Europe, and and Japan basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the studio Utani is Australian, and I guess now it's well, Michigani. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what uh, what's that? That's a, a great combination. Yeah, you know, I uh, couldn't have asked for better, right? Um, but yeah, uh, I guess that's our show. Uh, unless you guys had uh, any other anything else you wanted to add. That was a fun one. I, yeah, I good just, discussion. Uh, I, yeah. I'm just trying to think of a premise for my Del Toro. The only thing I can think of just off the cuff would be like, it would be cool to see him explore some kind of alien environment because he could really bring up the, um, like he could keep it alien while still showing us stuff, I think, which is uh, definitely oh, would be the strength de- of the series. Yeah, definitely. I, I think in Del Toro's case, they would, you know, it wouldn't be out of the question to maybe like, like I I think Del Toro might embrace certain elements of Alien, like 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 the Prometheus stuff. Right, I, exactly. But I, I, I yeah. But I was specifically thinking like with Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele would want to avoid that. Like he would want to go sure. after the movies that influenced him, which were you know the first two movies. Um, and I don't think he would want to touch Prometheus because it's like, uh, that's Ridley Scott's thing. And also it's kind of murky and convoluted and I don't know what to do with it anyway. Sure, uh, yeah. Yeah. But Del Toro might actually embrace it though. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the engineers and whatnot. Um, if right. Ridley Scott lets him. <laughs> right. Uh, pending. Yeah. yeah. Any one of those I think would be awesome. It'd be nice to have a fresh... Uh, fresh yeah. hand for this project this yeah. series you know someone just needs to convince ridley scott to to let it happen mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah, i'll see if gucci does well he'll be in a good mood there's still the rest of the weekend guys so go ahead and see it. <laughs> yeah i'm i'll see if i can see it i don't think i'm gonna have much time um <laughs> I, me, I will either but you know the audience yeah. hang on when this goes up <laughs> yeah check out ridley scott's house of gucci starring Lady Gaga and Adam Driver support um, Papa Ridley. Yeah, we yeah support support Daddy Ridley. He he needs your he needs your money so they can make Alien Covenant two. <laughs> um, <laughs> Prometheus three, please. Y- yes. Uh, but uh, no, I think that's our show. Uh, this was fun, and uh, we will be back next week with uh, a new topic and uh, more stories. Um, so that's right. Yeah. Stay tuned and uh, catch you next time. See ya. Stay safe. Thanks.